MCU in chronological order. If you want to follow the events of the MCU, you can't watch the Marvel films and shows in the order they released. They're not chronological. So, we're showing you a different order, arranged by when the events happen. The MCU officially started in 2008 with Iron Man, but it's not the first Marvel film you should watch. Start with Captain America, the first Avenger. It released in 2011 and is the fifth film from Marvel Studios. It begins in 1942, decades before Iron Man. We're only featuring the Marvel movies and select Marvel TV shows, namely the new Disney Plus series, in this main chronological order. There will be a few spoilers. Captain America is the fifth Marvel Studios film, with Iron Man, The Hulk, and Thor all having films before Cap. But it's the first film on our list because the events take place first, during World War II. We see the creation of the super soldier portrayed by Chris Evans, as well as his first battle with Hydra and its leader Red Skull. The film also introduces the Tesseract, which we later discover is the first Infinity Stone, one of the powerful gems that control reality. The second film on our list hit theaters in 2019. In Captain Marvel, which is set in 1995, we see the titular hero Carol Danvers, played by Brie Larson, fall to Earth and begin a hunt for the shape-shifting Skrull aliens. There's as much action here as there is nostalgia, especially if you're a 90s kid, thanks to scenes with blockbuster stores and even dial-up internet. According to the official Marvel timeline, Iron Man takes place in 2010. It's all about genius, inventor, philanthropist, playboy Tony Stark, played by Robert Downey Jr. He is captured by a terrorist organization, the leader of which wants the latest weapons system designed by Stark. However, Stark designs something even more powerful to help himself escape, the first Iron Man suit. The second Iron Man picks up where the first left off, Tony Stark grappling with his Iron Man identity being revealed. The government wants the technology behind his suit, and when Stark refuses to hand it over, another weapons manufacturer shows he's willing to do anything to get his hands on it. This film also introduces fellow Avengers the Black Widow and War Machine. Note, technically, you could watch The Incredible Hulk before Iron Man 2. Marvel said The Incredible Hulk, Iron Man 2, and Thor all happen around the same time, though The Incredible Hulk released a couple years before the others. Confusing, we know. We followed Marvel's official guidance, however, and recommend you watch Iron Man 2 first for consistency purposes. The Incredible Hulk follows Bruce Banner on the run from General Thunderbolt Ross and the US military. Realizing he can't ever hope to control or contain the Hulk, Ross decides to create his own version of the Hulk using another soldier, but he quickly loses control. The Incredible Hulk stars Edward Norton, but Mark Ruffalo replaced him in 2012 and has been the big green man since. God of Lightning has been banished to Earth from Asgard by his father Odin, all thanks to the trickery of Loki. In order to earn his powers back and control his hammer, Thor, portrayed by Chris Hemsworth, must prove he's worthy. Luckily, he meets a nice Earth scientist, played by Natalie Portman, who can help him set things right before Loki assumes total control of Asgard. The Avengers is the culmination of the so-called Phase 1 of the MCU. With all the main heroes introduced, the real challenge was finding something daunting enough to force them to work together. The combined power of Loki, the Tesseract, and an alien horde invading New York City proved to be the match that made these superheroes become friends in life and on the front line. The third and final standalone Iron Man film takes place six months after the giant fight in New York City. Tony Stark is dealing with the memories of the battle that took place, and nearly killed him. The memories lead him to build an army of Iron Man suits so he can always be prepared. The second Thor film sees its hero return to Asgard after the Loki-led invasion of New York City. He doesn't have much time to rest, however, as the ancient Dark Elves return. They were once defeated by his grandfather and thought to be extinct. They're back now in seeking the Aether, a powerful weapon that is later revealed to be an Infinity Stone or one of six powerful gems in the MCU. Captain America has been working for S.H.I.E.L.D., a special government agency, since the events of the Avengers, but he finds himself questioning the motives of the organization as he learns more about its plans. On top of that, his closest friend returns from the dead and becomes an adversary, the Winter Soldier, played by Sebastian Stan. This film also introduces the Falcon, played by Anthony Mackie. Guardians of the Galaxy stars Chris Pratt as Peter Quill, a rogue scavenger who stumbles across an Infinity Stone hidden in the ruins of an alien world. In a race against time, he forms a ragtag group of outcasts that includes a talking raccoon, voiced by Bradley Cooper, Groot the Talking Tree, and others. Together, they must stop Ronan the Accuser from wielding the Infinity Stone. The sequel picks up a few months after the original. Peter Quill is falling deeper in love with Zoe Saldana's Gamora. And he is forced to confront the mysteries of his past when he comes face to face with a godlike entity known as Ego, played by Kurt Russell.
Part of the challenge of placing these Guardian of the Galaxy films in the MCU timeline is that they seem separate and all take place in outer space. The Avengers reunite to confront a mistake created by Tony Stark and Bruce Banner, the AI known as Ultron, voiced by James Spader. If a single robotic version of Ultron is left standing, he can continue fighting the Avengers. This film also introduces new Avengers, the Scarlet Witch, played by Elizabeth Olsen, Quicksilver, played by Aaron Taylor Johnson, and Vision, played by Paul Bettany. Ant-Man stars Paul Rudd as a cat burglar recruited by Michael Douglas Hank Pym to don the Ant-Man suit in order to stop the technology from becoming weaponized. Pym's former prodigy, played by Corey Stoll, has recreated the technology in the form of a yellow jacket suit, and Ant-Man must battle him and ultimately save the day on the smallest scale imaginable. Although it's a Captain America film, Civil War features almost every single Avenger while adding two more heavy hitters to the lineup, Chadwick Boseman's Black Panther and Tom Holland's Spider-Man. Unfortunately, the Avengers are split into different factions due to Captain America wanting to save his friend Bucky Barnes, who appears to be responsible for the bombing of a UN session. A wall-crawling web-slinger makes his solo debut here, where he faces off with Michael Keaton's Vulture, a construction foreman who's become a black market weapons dealer after recovering technology from the New York City battle in the first Avengers film. On top of all that, Peter Parker is also dealing with all the usual problems that come with being a freshman in high school. Stephen Strange, played by Benedict Cumberbatch, is a world-class surgeon, and he knows it. Strange is insufferable to almost everyone who has to deal with him until a tragic accident takes away the use of his hands. Strange then travels the world searching for a cure that will give him back the use of his hands, and he does find an answer in the form of some ancient magic. After the UN bombing in Captain America, the Civil War, T'Challa must return home to Wakanda and be named King. Once there, he is confronted with a continuing policy of isolation that has helped protect Wakanda. He also faces a mistake from his father's past in the form of Eric Killmonger, who is played by Michael B. Jordan and might be the best villain in any Marvel film. The third solo film for Thor finds the hero jettisoned across space after the death of his father and the destruction of his hammer by his long-lost sister, Hela, played by Kate Blanchett. He finds himself stuck in gladiator fights pitted against the Hulk, who hadn't been seen since the Avengers defeated Ultron. Together, Thor and Hulk team up with Loki and Tessa Thompson's Valkyrie to take on Hela. Scott Lang is back, but he has been placed on house arrest following his role in the Civil War and siding with Captain America. He's been estranged from Hank Pym and Pym's daughter, Hope. But he reluctantly agrees to help them, thinking that Pym might be able to retrieve Hope's mother from the Quantum Realm. Black Widow is finally getting her own self-titled film, though it's been delayed from hitting theaters due to the coronavirus. Unfortunately, it took Black Widow's demise in Endgame for her to get a standalone movie. Nevertheless, Marvel's next film will follow Scarlett Johansson's Natasha Romanoff during a period of exile in her life. It takes place after the events of Captain America, Civil War, but before Infinity War and the Snap. It's being built up as a prequel to explain Black Widow's background. Black Widow will meet some of her old friends and family as she explores her past, including a fatherly figure, played by David Harbour, who is known as the Red Guardian. He's basically the Soviet Union's answer to Captain America. It wouldn't shock us if there's a big reveal that factors heavily into the future of the MCU. After years of orchestrating things from behind the scenes in order to find all the Infinity Stones, Thanos, voiced by Josh Brolin, has decided to go get them himself. The only thing standing in his way are the Avengers, who are currently spread across the universe. To raise the stakes even more, Thanos' only reason for seeking the power of the stones is to wipe out half of all life in the universe. After Thanos snapped away half of all life, Leaving the universe in total chaos, the Avengers must try to make things right. Five years pass and a slim chance emerges for them to undo it all, but before that can happen, Captain America and Tony Stark need to make peace and reunite the Avengers one final time. Elizabeth Olsen's Wanda Maximoff has quietly been one of the most tragic characters in the MCU. She lost her family in a bombing, which saw her left stranded in a pile of rubble for days with her brother. Her brother then died during the events of Avengers, Age of Ultron. She finally found love with Paul Bettany's vision but was forced to kill him to prevent Thanos from getting his hands on the Mind Stone. Oh, and after killing him, Thanos reversed time and killed Vision again in front of her. All this has led us to WandaVision, the first live-action MCU show on Disney+, Plus, which sees the character take over a small town in New Jersey in order to make a happier version of her own life. Of course, another important question is, when does this take place in our timeline? The events of the series take place in the weeks right after everyone who was snapped is brought back to life. The second of Marvel's new Disney Plus series premiered in March 2021. It sees Anthony Mackie's Sam Wilson, aka The Falcon, and Sebastian Stan's Bucky Barnes, aka The Winter Soldier, T-800, 
teaming up to take on a new threat in the form of an organization known as the Flag Smashers, who've gotten their hands on some type of super soldier serum like the one that made their former friend Steve Rogers into Captain America. If that wasn't enough, the pair also has to deal with the government's hand-picked choice to wield Cap Shield, John Walker, Wyatt Russell, replacing this series before Spider-Man, Far From Home, because we know it takes place six months after the snap which, would put us around the spring of 2024 in the MCU. Far From Home takes place just a little later, coinciding with the end of Peter's school year in 2024. Far From Home is the latest Marvel film, even though it's almost now two years old now, and it serves as our first look at the MCU post-Infinity War, as we see everyone who was snapped by Thanos return to life five years later. A freshly unsnapped Peter Parker heads to Europe for a field trip, but he's surprised by Nick Fury and Jake Gyllenhaal's Mysterio, who need his help against enemies known as Elementals. The storyline suggests the action takes place around November 2024, MCU present time, which puts it after Spider-Man, far from home but before Spider-Man, No Way Home. Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings sees Simu Liu playing the title role, facing off against the Mandarin, who is played by Hong Kong cinema superstar Tony Leung Chu Wei. Hardcore Marvel fans will recognize the return of Ben Kingsley, who played the role of the, the Mandarin in Iron Man 3, before admitting that he was merely an actor paid to play the part. This time however we get to meet the real deal, alongside a host of other characters, real and mythical, as well as a few friendly faces along the way. Trying to figure out where Loki stands in the MCU is a brain-breaking activity. The show has bounced between the eruption of Mount Vesuvius in 79 AD and an apocalyptic hurricane hitting Alabama in 2050. The show seems to take place outside of the timeline itself, as we see the inner workings of the TVA, replacing it at the end of the watch list, mainly because the show is about the entire MCU timeline, whether it's Loki dealing with events from every phase of the MCU, like his defeat in New York, the death of his mother, and his own death at the hands of Thanos, or subtle references to other Marvel films, like Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 2's villain being a target of the variant's time bombing. It wouldn't shock us if we learn the main setting of Loki, the TVA headquarters, is not a location outside of time but someplace very far in the future.